my name is Liz Moore. I'm the director of the Peace and Justice Action League of Spokane. We're based in Spokane County, Eastern Washington. Uh, we are celebrating 45 years this year. Our mission is to build a just and nonviolent world, and we approach that work through community organizing and grassroots leadership development. For the last several years, our priorities have been focused on ending mass incarceration and systemic racism in our local city county uh, criminal system, um, standing with immigrants in our community and in our region uh, who are under political attack from the Trump Pence administration, and um, countering the escalation of white nationalism in our region as well as um, supporting grassroots leadership through our Young Activist Leaders Program, which is a nine-month organizer training program for uh, high school and college-age young people, and um, a number of other uh, educational programs throughout the year. What's happening on the ground in Spokane County is uh, really the, the, the continued playing out of the dynamics in our region, which is that we are really a contested territory. We are an epicenter, one of thousands of epicenters around the country where there is really a struggle around who belongs and who doesn't and who is seen as worthy and who is not seen as worthy and who should be protected and who should be demonized. And the way that's playing out now um, includes the realities of the very significant racial disparities in our county jail, where uh, African Americans are 2% of our county population, but 12% uh, of the jail population. Native Americans are uh, less than 2% of the county population, but 7% of the jail population. And so one of the things we've been working on with our partners in the Smart Justice Spokane Coalition is to uh, call for racial equity in the emergency health releases from the county jail, um, where we now, currently, we are seeing county jail population levels that are the lowest that they have been since the 90s, but we have some, some anecdotal information because of course the, the, the actual data has not been released publicly by the county, but anecdotally we, we believe that uh, it's most likely that the way the release decisions were made based on charge level and bail amount um, have actually uh, most likely concentrated the racial disparities and disproportionately benefited um, white people, but disproportionately kept people of color incarcerated in our county jail. Um, so that's one way that it's playing out. Another way that things are playing out right now is the struggle around um, the shelter at home. Um, there have been some um, protests against the stay home order, and those have been led by uh, Representative Matt Shea, who is, who is openly calling for a division of our state, literally, to form a 51st state with Eastern Washington and North Idaho, who um, has published what he what is titled a biblical call to war. Uh, he is extremely anti-Muslim and, um, ex and has organized open carry protests many times. Um, so he is leading his, his followers deliberately into harm's way by holding these rallies um, and using the genuine concern that people may be feeling about their own economic well-being as a tool to um, put people in danger and to um, fluff up his own public image. And all of this, of course, is happening against the backdrop of the reality that um, that small businesses and everyday people are not getting the kind of support that they should be getting from the Trump-Pence administration, um, the mishandling of the Paycheck Protection program by large banks um, where small businesses were cut out of receiving um, aid from uh, large banks like Wells Fargo. We're seeing a lawsuit now happening nationally around that. Uh, and so while the lack of support for um, small businesses and for everyday people is um, creating the crisis, uh, some extremists on the far right are using that reality as an excuse to um, call for measures that would put us in more danger. So we have been working with partners to uh, bring attention to the need to reduce the population in the jail, get people out, get people safe, and do so in a way that connects them with resources, not just sends them out the door, sends them out the gate with nothing, nothing in their hands and nowhere to sleep. Um, we have been working with the Spokane Immigrant Rights Coalition. Uh, 
to uh, raise money for the uh, support of undocumented families who have been specifically excluded from the CARES Act. And in fact, what many people may not know is that families that have mixed documentation status are also excluded. So we have been raising money for the Family Support Fund, uh, which is an extension of the legal support fund that uh, we co-organized through the Spoken Immigrant Rights Coalition starting in January 2017. Um, and we have been uh, working closely with that coalition. If folks are interested in that, that's the Spokane Immigrant Rights Coalition and the website is CIRCWA, S-I-R-C-W-A. And uh, folks can donate there if they like to support the needs of Eastern Washington undocumented families. Um, so we, those, are, those are two pieces of our efforts. We have also been uh, doubling down on our anti-racism education through this period of time. So we have, worked with the, actually at the request of the Asian Pacific Islander Coalition Spokane chapter, we have co-facilitated uh, twice an uh, anti-Asian racism bystander intervention training uh, with our Young Activist Leaders Program first, and then secondly, opening that up uh, through what we're, what we're calling Webinar Wednesdays. So twice a month, we are holding webinars on Wednesdays um, to uh, accomplish the same objectives that are the reason that we organize our annual Peace and Justice Action Conference. This year would have been our 11th annual Peace and Justice Action Conference, and we uh, canceled it due to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so we're holding these webinars as a way of accomplishing those same goals. Mm -hmm. So we've done the bystander intervention training. Um, we did a special membership meeting to bring folks together, share an update, share our priorities for the year, and share how we're transitioning those priorities during the pandemic. And uh, uh, this week, we will, tonight, we'll also be holding um, a uh, webinar with experts on uh, countering white nationalist recruitment online, because with more and more young people spending more and more time on the internet, it is reasonable to assume that uh, any young person has encountered white nationalist recruitment content. We're looking, we're holding this webinar to provide information for young people and parents or anyone concerned with um, kind of what to look for and how to help young people not be vulnerable to that recruitment. And uh, our, our webinar Wednesdays are a great opportunity to connect. Uh, for the bystander intervention workshop, we had folks from North Carolina, from California, all over the country coming together. And we're, we're just delighted and really honored uh, to be able to not just connect with um, social justice folks in other communities, but actually to be able to be a resource to our movement collectively with these webinar Wednesdays. So they are absolutely open to everybody. Uh, there is a no cost uh, registration option um, where people and people can just self-select right into that uh, if they are living lightly, as we say, which many, many of us are right now. I feel really cautious about looking at what comes out of after the the curve is flattened and we come out of the pandemic response, immediate pandemic response, is that we will need continued pandemic response because the what what we should be focusing on right now is preventing a multi generational impact on working families, particularly families of color, undocumented families. Uh, because of the realities of the huge disparities in wealth and income in this country um, that, of course, disproportionately affect communities of color, uh, the, I believe that we will most likely see multi-generational financial impact on families from this, from this moment in time. So what we should be doing, what our government should be focusing on is, um, is supports to um, to at least lessen that blow, but actually to prevent it. Mm. Uh, instead, what we're seeing is that the the Trump Pence model of leadership, whether that's on the national level or on the local level, of course, is about prioritizing the the continued profit pocketing of the few at the top of the economic pyramid. Um, where I mean, Washington State is a is a state with no income tax, for example, where uh, where Jeff Bezos lives, there is no income tax. 
and um, you know, with with companies like Amazon profiting at record levels right now, um, what we what we should be doing is using those collective resources to uh, care for communities to meet the needs of everyday people. We and even you know. From a justice perspective, it's clear, but from an economic perspective, it's clear. We know that our economy is driven by consumer spending. So when, you know, thousands, millions of people across the country are struggling on a day-to-day -day basis in the richest country that the planet has ever seen, that is not a sign of justice. That's what we should be focusing on. Um, but we know that that the 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 greedy few at the top, these multi-billionaires who continue to profit in times of crisis are uh, strategically dividing, tr attempting to divide us against each other and point the finger of blame as usual at black families, at new immigrants, at uh, low income families, um, in spite of the fact that, that um, we, we all know that no matter what color we are, no matter how we worship or whether we worship or uh, how little money is in our pocket, we all need the same sorts of um, safety and basic needs met. Um, but they try to pit us against each other. And so um, what, I'm, what I'm encouraged by around the country and here locally is ways that uh, People are, are looking out of their windows and seeing each other and finding ways to be shoulder to shoulder even when we actually can't be in the same room together. So um, mutual aid networks, uh, the um, organizing that's being done to raise money for um, undocumented families, the continued national and local push for decarceration and the end to mass incarceration. Uh, and the ways that we are seeing that um, that we are the ones actually that choose what is possible. We are the ones that can define what is possible and that we don't have to settle for the stories that are told by the people who hold positions of power, that we can actually tell our own stories to each other about what is possible and that we can organize together and push for that reality to come into being. We've been reading uh, on in our staff. We have a book club. We've been reading uh, *Emergent Strategy* by uh, Adrienne Marie Brown, and uh, just this morning we were talking about the chapter on creating more possibilities. And that, as she says, that the that social justice is um, science fiction. That we are we are actually working to create realities that we've actually never experienced. And so keeping that that vision um, in view is is. I think what what keeps us going in difficult times such as these and and then like living that we can put pieces of that vision into reality. So this is a poem by uh, Hagen Hasselbalk, which is in a book of earth prayers um, that I purchased at the marvelous little fair trade store that's in the building that I work in called Kazuri that I work in when I'm not here at home. So, so I'd like to share this poem as a meditation. Let there be peace, welfare, and righteousness in every part of the world. Let confidence and friendship prevail for the good of East and West, for the good of South, for the good of all humanity. Let the people inspire their leaders, helping them to seek peace by peaceful means, helping them and urging them to build a better world, a world with a home for everybody, a world with food and work for everybody, a world with spiritual freedom for everybody. Let those who have the power of money be motivated by selfless compassion. Let money become a tool for the good of humankind. Let those who have power deal respectfully with the resources of the planet. Let them respect and maintain the purity of the air, water, land, and subsoil. Let them cooperate to restore the ecological soundness of Mother Earth. Let trees grow up by the billions around the world. Let green life invade the deserts. Let industry serve humanity and produce waste that serves nature. Let technology respect the holiness of Mother Earth. 
Let those who control the mass media contribute to create mutual understanding, to create, contribute to create optimism and confidence. Let ordinary people meet by the millions across the borders. Let them create a universal network of love and friendship. Let billions of human beings cooperate to create a good future for their children and grandchildren. Let us survive in peace and harmony with Mother Earth.